All right. Okay. So what I totally forgot to do last time mm -hmm. is actually fucking introduce the Power Hour. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> we, I don't I, think I, we've been, I've I don't think the replay. I was like, man, I feel, I feel great about the show. <laughs> the conversation went well. And then I watched it and I was like, I'm a fucking idiot. Like, I didn't even say what the show is. Like, nothing. We just we just went in. We just went for it, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, my goodness. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Is it, wait, is it episode 23? 23. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen. Episode number 23 of the Power Hour is happening right now. I'm Wes Gardner. You can see the nameplate right down here um, yeah. of nitrobeard.com. And over this direction, oh, who is that? It's the other bald guy, Marco Flores. 20, <laughs> 23 is Michael Jordan's number. And if you connect that to oh, – anyways. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, then that if you divide conspiracy, conspiracy two theory, by three. 23, Jim Carrey, all that stuff. All, it all adds up. It all adds People, up. The clues have been there the whole time. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Wes is having all day of memory issues already. Pretty accurate. <laughs> we all are, man. By the way, yeah, welcome to the Power Hour. If you, if you are watching live right now, we're getting all the live chat. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Last <laughs> week was a lot of fun. This week, I have a feeling it's going to be even better. Normally, we talk about video games. Um, this one we're going to talk. We're going to start it with some video games. Then we're going to talk about a passion of Marco and I's, a little bit of pro wrestling. So yeah. you'll know from what I just said if this episode will be one of your favorites or not. So, <laughs> but I will say that we're going to try to explain it in such a way that even non wrestling people will see why we're interested in it. Yeah, you know, um, because we we're not. I'll put it this way: we're not marks. Marks are people that believe all of wrestling not necessarily to be real mm -hmm. but like i hate triple h because he's mean to daniel bryan like <laughs> they believe the story enough that they let that influence their opinion one way or another but marco and i are kind of nice we've watched wrestling for years and years um I, we both have done martial arts um we under, we've watched like ufc you know it's it's one of those things that once you understand it's a business then you look at it like a business and then you're like okay are they using this person well are they promoting this person well? How does the crowd react to this person? Yeah. So we're like taking the step back and being like, what worked? What didn't? Who's good? Who's not? Who needs to be off of fucking TV? Who needs to be brought up to the big time today? <laughs> right. Like that type of stuff is what we're going to cover. But, uh, but yeah, we're going to get it started right here. Let me get this going. Um, so, Marco, this is going to be yours. This is a yeah. game that you've told me about. So is this on Steam? It's on – I believe it's on Steam Greenlight okay. right now. Um so, like, I was listening to uh, Super Best Friend Cast. They had their own, like, Two Best Friends Play. They had their own podcast, and uh, this was one of the games that they were talking about. And so, uh, yeah, you go, ahead, you go ahead and play it. Okay. Um, so, I've been hearing, I was hearing about this. I was like, okay, awesome. Sprite base, you know, fighter uh, on Steam. I was like, okay, sounds good. Then I started watching the trailers. You can see here, you know, looks great, you know. You know, it looks like, you know, indie in a way. Yeah. And then it starts doing, like, training mini games, as you can see, like the, huh. the tile breaking right here. Yeah. And then, you know, Kumite type thing. So, like, you're, you, it's like you're on the path of, like, of being, like, a karate master. So, like, so, you know, see training sequences. Oh, nice. This, this dude is running. You know, you're doing sparring here. You know, and it looks really good in, in terms of uh, sprites, you know. Yeah. Like it says, realistic fighting. And this dude's kicking bats. You know, come on, dude. <laughs> so, so cool. So, you know, so like, yeah, it it has it has all these aspects of like the the karate martial artists, like what they do, like uh, official tournaments, liver blow. You see that? You see a car? That guy's running towards the car. What is he gonna do with the car? You know? What? And then, <laughs> and then now here you here you see inner style fights. You know, uh, karate versus Muay Thai. You know, back to sparring, showing like the rapid attacks here. And then you see the, like the lower like left and right. Yeah. Uh, you know, body like uh, you know, durability. Bear. Dude's about to fight a bear. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Again, oh. Muay Thai. You know, they're showing different stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, this looks great. You don't really because you don't see sprite-based combat anymore. Yeah. And this just flying jump kick over a car. That's so rad. You know. See, look at that. Yeah. They, they, you know, they have names of the moves. Ooh. I guess Skull Crush. Um. But yeah, I mean, like. This was like so under the radar that like I'm yeah I'm just hearing about it right now and yeah. like oh man I'm so into it because it's 
it's reminded me. It's not reminded me. It's actually based on an actual uh, martial arts uh, style uh, thing called Kyokushin um, by uh, uh, Masoyama. Uh, so that's based on his uh, style. Like I think it was called like extreme karate. Huh. So like that's where you see like the training sequences. Uh, it's like they actually do these things like in uh, you know their classes. Right. So that the dude is like doing you know jogging. He's getting kicked in the legs for like you know toughening up his legs. Yeah. Um, so I mean like you're gonna see a whole bunch of stuff here. And it's like it's just a path to just being like a, a a master. So I mean, I mean this looks awesome. I mean, I mean as you can see here, Wes. Like I mean, I'm pretty sure you can appreciate it because you know being a martial artist yourself and yeah. just, you know, see, you know, I think like re like going back to your old day, like early days of like just training and yeah, doing just some you learned your forms, but now you have to work on your agility. And here's right. the stuff that we're gonna do, like because you know it's really famous. Muay Thai is really famous for like oh these guys have to go and shin kick tree bark or whatever mm -hmm. you know and like right. oh they're gonna get hit with baseball bats and like all this type of shit but some of that's real like that's not an yeah. exaggeration right. for movies like that's how they do it they'll get kendo sticks and just wear their shins down yeah and, well, i mean uh, so there's yeah, a, oh, it's like the dude is, dude is work his shin. <laughs> it's like he has to have a day job so he can just be the best karate master that's you know? true man <laughs> but it does look good, I, and I agree. And here's something, and this is kind of a, as a martial arts guy. And you know, Marco has been. Um, he was a part. I don't know if you still are of loop kicks, which is kind of like mm. um, there's a whole subgenre of like martial arts tricking. Yeah. And it's where you're using body momentum and things like that to do amazing flips. It's almost yeah. like mixed martial arts with parkour, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's kind of like going on the right base. But yeah. uh, I, I restarted this again because I want you guys to notice the actual. It's all in the hips. Like, kicks, mm -hmm. punches, blocks, everything's hip-based. Like, whenever you're in a fight with somebody, look at their belt. Because their belt will never lie. Like, right, right. The, not the wavy okay. part of it, but the middle part, like, the actual knot. Watch mm -hmm. the knot, because then you'll know what foot they're going to lead off with. Like, things like that. But if you notice, whenever he's doing the kicks and he'll come up, like, they actually do the right pivots and thrusts right. and, like, momentum and... It seems like a small thing, but, like, Street Fighter so, you know, kind of avant-garde about it and so crazy. Yeah. Whenever you see it done more subtly like this, right? like, you can see the actual frames of a kick. And, like, oh, with a side kick, there's five steps. You have to, mm -hmm. like, get your base, bring the leg up, pivot, bring it back, pivot yeah. it back, and then bring it down. So it looks like they've had all of those as separate forms of the animation, mm -hmm. and, which yeah. is a nice touch, which makes it look like those kicks. You can see him wind up. And then yeah, when he comes exactly. in, you know, he's actually bringing his arms down. He's doing what he's supposed to do. Right, right. So, like, yeah, you have choices of where you want to, like, go. Yeah, again, this is going back to, you know, having a day, day job. But, like, the training sequences are, like, look awesome. I think at some point he was punching water when the water was dripping down while it was raining. Huh. Uh, so, like, because I'm a fan of, like, training montages, because, you know, you're, I'm grow, I grew up in the 80s, and, like, movie, like martial arts movies, oh, yeah. and, like, and, like, Rocky, like, that's where they were brought up. I was brought up on training montages, and I think he, I think this, he messes up his crane. <laughs> <Fuck it up. laughs> it's like, no, no, no. But he, it doesn't matter. He wants to be karate master. It's fine. So, yeah. <laughs> He's got to learn. You got to learn. <laughs> He's got to fail. Yeah. So many hey, times exactly. to get good. <laughs> yeah, what exactly. is the whole thing that, like, you have to, in order to be, uh, all right, there we go. Um, you have to be, you have to practice something ten thousand times to be okay at it. Yeah, yeah. And then like, to be a master, it's something like two hundred thousand times. Yeah, like Bruce Lee made a quote about it. It's like I'm, I'm more afraid of, I'm more afraid of the guy that practiced one kick ten thousand times than yeah. the guy that practice practice ten thousand kicks like one time. One time, right? Yeah. So like, I mean, yeah. There's there's a little bit of a story. Yeah, you know, he's gonna be the best that he you know ever was. Pokemon, yada yada. <laughs> so yeah, so it's legit. It's legit uh, Kyokushin style. Like wow. all this, all this you see, it's nothing, nothing fake. Like no fireballs, no like super triple flips and all that stuff. It's basic, basic yeah. fighting karate. <laughs> and Mark, <laughs> he's, not he so the, he's not so great with the uh, the crane, but it's fine. Oh man, he's bleeding everywhere. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that's Karate Master. Oh. Um, what's it called? Uh, knockdown Liver Blow? No. I for forgot what the, the KDB stands for, but it's it's like an awesome name. But, yeah, I mean... There's a tree stuff it. right there. Kicking okay, the tree. I was waiting for it. I was yeah, like, you were looking for a tree. I was looking for it. <laughs> Chat saying they're, they're thinking of Shakira right now. 
Hips don't just lie. Comes yeah, in man. And says my, yeah, hips don't lie, man. It's true. Shakira, Shakira has has an idea about something. <laughs> <laughs> She's the true martial artist. Shakira. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, going up against a pro wrestler, breaking breaking bats on your back. And that's a kind of a brilliant segue. The little pro wrestling thing. Oh, there you Here's go. The deal. <laughs> we can talk about it. Um, well, we can wrap this up, but you know, CM Punk joined the UFC. That's right. Yeah. And. <laughs> I think he's going to kick some ass. Not because so? I'm a mark on pro wrestling, but just he's training with the Gracies, who are like right, royalty yeah. in yeah, MMA. And, and King Mo is with them, I think, during yeah. training too. Yeah. So he's at the right camp. He's been training with them for years. Like that's mm-hmm. a, If you guys notice the past few years of CM Punk's career, he was wearing Gracie jiu-jitsu stuff out to the ring. Oh, yeah, he was. Right. So the thing is, and then Renner Gracie is like, CM Punk is the best student I've ever had. Yeah. He had Anderson yeah. fucking Silva. You know <laughs> exactly. what I'm saying? Like, come on now. Like, if if CM Punk is working that hard, he's good. I mean, everyone yeah. knows he's good. Uh, but if he's training that much, if he's working that hard, if the Gracies, who have trained hundreds of people, think that he's going to be good, he's going to be good. Yeah. Um, And I do like the way Dana White is saying it, that Dana's going to get CM Punk in with... Um, oh, let's you can, pause this one. Yeah, you go pause that, um, yeah. <laughs> but if we're getting CM Punk in there, and then Dana's going to put him up against someone who has like a 1-0 record, or an 0-2 record, or yeah. someone with a record like his. Like, he's not going to go in and fight fucking George St. Pierre his first time. Right. Year. It ain't going right. to happen. You know. Um, but, uh, funny enough, uh, the person that wants to fight him right now is uh, Jason David Frank. Uh if I don't know if you remember the Green Ranger, he's he's actually uh, an MMA fighter himself. Yeah. Uh, not not so much on the pro, but I think he had like five amateur fights. Yeah. And I think he's undefeated right now. Um, but yeah, uh, him and CM Punk I had this like I don't know like Twitter rivalry type of thing. Yeah. But uh, uh, J- Jason David Frank, Tommy from the Power Rangers, uh, wants to fight it, fight CM Punk for his first uh, first fight. So hmm. like. That would be pretty interesting, you know, because I'm not saying it's the same as like Pacquiao Mayweather, but like it's that's it's kind of you know like a different take on it, you know. Right. You have like, a guy who I does show business martial arts, mm-hmm. and then you got you have a guy who does show business fighting. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So like, <laughs> right. technically, oh, both yeah. of these guys are phonies, but then they're gonna get in there and whoop each other's ass, and people are gonna yeah. be like, "What? Make a good uh, show out of it." I can't tell you the uh, like. <laughs> this is totally a power topic. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Leonis. Uh, yeah. The uh, the thing with the thing with pro wrestling is you got guys that came from the NFL. You got guys that like did pro fighting. You have guys that come in and they can't do the training camp for yeah. pro wrestling. Yeah. And they're like, this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. How do these guys do this 300 days a year? Like, right. how do they do it? And these guys are huge. These are guys that are in great shape because they played for the NFL for five years. Um, you have pro boxers that come in that want to do it, and they can't because they don't. They're not conditioned enough. Yeah. You know, so um, yeah. There's a lot so, of people uh, saying, and these are pro athletes doing like NHL and NFL, and you know, all these other guys coming in and saying this is the hardest sport in the world. Like, right. these guys are no joke. Like, if if they're gonna fight, they're gonna be conditioned better than anybody. You can right, right, exactly. See, you know, um, because you have just, to take giant bumps 300 days a year. Like, yeah. uh, I'm not just, saying just the kick in the face doesn't suck, but falling off a 25 foot ladder onto concrete. Yeah. You know. It's, <laughs> you know pretty, yeah. Uh, pretty just 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 going off uh, what, what you said. Um, yeah, you're having people from like uh, football, former football players, uh, trying to uh, join uh, WWE. You have. Uh, military people that you know went to tours in Iraq and stuff, uh, you know, trying to like try to see like if they had, can make a career out of it. Yeah. And um, I think WWE. I think I was trying to show uh, Wes a clip of this. It was kind of basically like a maybe like a 2014 like mini tough enough clip. Yeah. Uh, basically, all these guys trying out for uh, the WWE. Uh, they went to like the, the performance center, and a lot of them like gassed out because and they thought that they were able to take it because they had all this all this training and stuff right and then um 
at some point uh, they had to do promo stuff, and like that's another aspect of pro wrestling that uh, people don't like really realize. Like, dude, you got to you got if you probably have, you have a character and you have to sell it to people that like you're this this you know larger than life person or like you know, but like it it gave like the people that are trying to train or uh, uh, audition or whatever like uh, like uh, they open their eyes to it and it's like wow like they do more than just you know be fake and taking hits and stuff they, they do a lot of stuff yeah uh, kind of like a, a a show business boot camp in a way it really you know? is because yeah. you have to sell yourself like some of the right. best the best people that do some of the best promos in the world you have like um, you know CM Punk for one of the newer guys um, mm -hmm. but like Jake the Snake Roberts. You have yep. um, Randy Savage had his own brand of it, but oh, yeah. Ultimate Warrior yeah, was out of this fucking world. Like he was insane. He was, Rest yeah. his soul. Uh, but yeah. but you have these guys that really are like you said, large in our life. Um, and there are guys I love. I love Lance Storm. I love Bret the Hitman <laughs> Hart. I yeah. love Daniel Bryan. Yeah. They all fucking suck on the microphone. Like I don't even <laughs> think Daniel Bryan's that good on the mic. He's gotten a lot better. But yeah, he's no, you know, hell, I think, like, Zack Ryder's better on the mic than Daniel Bryan is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because so, yeah, he's a character, yeah. Yeah, it's a different character. Uh, and, I mean, of course, you know, Daniel Bryan's the ultimate underdog, so it kind of makes sense that he wouldn't be that great on the mic. But, uh, yeah. but, yeah, you have some guys that are amazing technical wrestlers, and they're boring as shit. Like, Lance Storm, oh, my God. Like, you can, <laughs> you can hear a pin drop after one of his promos. Um, yeah. Because no one cared. No one cared. They cared when he got in the ring. He was amazing. But then he's just so boring. And you're like, God. Yeah. And even hell, you had uh, Brett the Hitman Hart. He was teamed up with Jim the Anvil Neidhart for so long. Yeah. Because Jim Neidhart was the man on the mic. He was, he was yeah, good. He was. he was talking fast. Like, all of it. He had it down. Yeah. And then Brett just wore his Hitman shades, sat in the corner, and went like... Yeah. Just not his hands out, like... Gave the chase to a kid, and, yeah. and that was it. Yeah. That was it. He was kind of a silent badass. But then he started talking, mm -hmm. and you're like, ooh. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that, whenever you get someone that's the whole package, it's like super Brock rare. You get your rock. You get your Stone Cold. You get your – even Triple H. Like, Triple yeah. H, especially now as part of the authority, he's fucking incredible. Like, I love him as the heel. Basically, he's the new generation Vince McMahon. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I love it. I think it's great. I want him to be the, the authority guy forever because it fits him. That's him. That's Triple H. Yeah. Like, you can tell that that is really what he does. Um, yeah. Probably not that severe backstage. But, you know, he's he is very much um, one of those guys. But, yeah, we'll get to the pro yeah. wrestling here in a minute. Now we got <laughs> a little scoopy scoop. Yeah, so uh, Street Fighter V uh, put out a new trailer, and um, – they had a, a playable demo at Capcom Cup that just happened this weekend, this past weekend. So uh, you're going to see more in-depth stuff on uh, on Street Fighter V. Uh, you know, you're going to see the introduction here, and you know, it just it looks again, it looks great. It looks like a more uh, defined version of Street Fighter IV, where it was, uh, Street Fighter IV was all bulky. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see like new stuff, like Chun Li has like a, a underneath uh, slide. Uh, you know, again, breakable stages. Uh, they do it. Activation uh, EX moves, where I was talking in the previous episode, uh, you would just do EX moves, but in this one, you have to activate a mode like element, like they're like they're bending, you know, like like avatar type style. Oh, I see. Um, right. So here it looks like he, uh, I think uh, Chun Li was doing parries, but uh, I was watching a video from Maximilian and like they were debunking it because it was just happening uh, on like reuse uh, EX uh, like lightning mode. And then, like, yeah, you know, Ryu doing the Dungeon Hadouken. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just showing more stuff and, you know, more speculation on Street Fighter V. And then, like, there's, like, you know, you have this and everybody's all hyped up and think it's the end of the trailer. And then, like, like Japanese trailers, they show, like, something at the very end uh, where, like, you know, reveal happens. Okay, well, what's that? Sunglasses. Who wears sunglasses? Oh, shit. Is it... Oh, it's Charlie. What's this dot on his head? You know, Charlie coming back, huh. back from the dead for some reason. Uh, but yeah, he's like the new, I guess the newest reveal of uh, for Street Fighter V, which was awesome. Yeah. Uh, it makes me wonder if, you know, Guile will be in it, you know, because, you know, 
Uh, Char Charlie and Guile are basically the Ryu and Ken of like the U.S. military martial arts, you know, style. Thing. Right. But yeah, I mean, like I said, Capcom Cup happened this past weekend, and they they were showcasing more of the game. And like again, it's just it's really exciting to have Street Fighter Five uh, sooner rather than later yeah. when they were mentioning before, like, uh, yeah, Street Fighter Five won't come out until, like, 2018. Now we're looking like it's coming, might come out, like, 2016, if anything, uh, just to have it out there. And, you know, uh, this is where the whole PlayStation exclusivity was coming in. Okay. I think PlayStation was giving the money to basically to be able to make the game. I see. Because Capcom was doing dumb decisions on how they were selling the product and, you know, having high, like, expectations on their on their games, like... Four million units of a game wasn't enough. Like they needed more than that, type thing. Mm. But yeah, I mean, you know, Street Fighter Five. Again, I'm, I'm probably just, I'm gonna be covering this on my side, uh, yeah. either with breaking news late or you know just throwing this up on Power Hour or whenever there's something new about it. Absolutely. But, I mean, yeah, that's pr that's pretty much it with Street Fighter Five. Like just a lot of excitement, lot lot more speculation, and you know, no, oh, there goes Mike Ross. But yeah. Uh yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. I mean we can we can uh, go on to the next subject unless you have you have something to, to say on it too. But yeah, oh, yeah. that's pretty well, much it. You are pretty much the uh, yeah. Everyone's saying the stream's uh, kind of lagging a little bit. Yeah, it's on my end. Um, I mm -hmm. see that it's dropping a few frames. Um, hopefully it should be good now. Um, okay. But yeah, it'll just do bursts. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's on Twitch's side. I don't know if it's on my side. Um, Twitch has just been weird. But uh, going to the Street Fighter thing is I think it's smart now that we kind of discussed when it might be coming out um, mm -hmm. that PlayStation got that exclusivity Yeah. to fund it because I'm not going to say Street Fighter V won't be successful. I'm just saying they have how many versions of Street Fighter IV right. that, you know, by the time it comes out, people will probably want something new. Yeah. But even right now, it feels like they announced it too early. You know, do you, okay. like, do you feel that way? Um, I kind of think it's okay, but only because uh, the, the newest update to Sh Ultra Street Fighter 4 just oh, like hit like today. Yeah. And they released Omega Mode, which is the whole change up, like everything about Street Fighter 4, like the fun version of the game. So like people are going to be messing around, like, like people are going to be messing around with that. Because again, characters have new, moves characters have like new properties on the moves so it's basically like a new version of like ultra street fighter 4 so you're going to have tournaments uh that's going to be basic uh street fighter like ultra street fighter 4 and then you're going to have maybe uh not so much side tournament but like like uh like like hell in a cell double main event with omega mode right and that's going to be a totally different looking tournament because uh all these characters because it's the omega mode is not going to be balanced at all that's what the developer said it's just just for fun, and just find out what you can do and not do in, in the Omega mode, and it's kind of like um, basically kind of like beta testing for maybe putting stuff into Street Fighter Five. So that's I why see. they're releasing Omega mode. Yeah. And then you could relay Omega mode to like uh, Street Fighter Two Rainbow Edition, where you had all the crazy air fireballs oh, yeah. and like like multiple like block of balls all over the place. So like a glitchy glitchy Street Fighter uh, that's fun. So, uh, like, I think uh, they're going to be ca caught with their intention with Omega Mode while they develop Street Fighter V and basically pump it out. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think it's okay with me. Um, I, can see, I can see your point, though, Wes, because uh, uh, Street Fighter IV was going, going strong in EVO for like, mm. the past, I don't know, like, how many years now. Right. So, like, I, I think it – well, for, like, the tourna tournament scene, there's – I think it's starting about, like, time to, like, start moving on to something else. Um, and, you know, I guess, like, you know, Omega Mode and, like, this just revealing is going to keep our attention to Tor Street Fighter until, like, it releases. So, yeah, I mean, that's just me. Yeah, well, yeah, and um, something that I really do like about Street Fighter is it's a very iterative series, which means mm -hmm. you're not going to see a lot of major changes. Between right. It. Like, Ryu's going to have his, you know, fireball, and Jenny's yeah. going to do her upside-down, well, like, spinning wheel kick. So, yeah. like, there's going to be some mainstays. But then the mechanics, like one of my favorite, hell, I'd say one of my favorite games ever is Street Fighter III Third Strike. Mm -hmm. I love that game because there's so many nuanced, like, parry systems 
yeah. and certain dodges and certain zoning that you can do in that game that you can't do in other ones. Like, there's the mechanics of it, like the really in-depth sort of stuff. Right. And it's beautifully balanced. And I will say that each Street Fighter has its own shtick like that. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. people will have their favorite Street Fighter. Some people, it's like, oh, I, you know, Street Fighter's okay, but I love Capcom versus SNK. Mm -hmm. It's still oh, Street right. Fighter yeah. characters. Yeah. But yeah. the the hitboxes are different. The you yeah. know there's a certain ebb and flow and a feel to this fighting game, mm -hmm. uh, to to Street Fighter in particular, that it changes just enough mm -hmm. to warrant digging like a hundred hours. In. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's, but it's always been like that. Not even, and I'm a big Tekken guy. I, I really love Tekken. I know you are too. Um, but mm -hmm. Tekken just doesn't fucking change. Like Tekken, I could play Tekken one, and then I could go play Tekken six, and they're about the same game. Yeah. Um, juggles, yeah. be sure you Juggle, block. Yeah. Offensive is very, very heavy in that game, and juggling is an aspect of that. To where yeah. like you can't, you can shut down your opponent right from the launcher and yeah. not, you know, give them any sort of comeback. Uh, but yeah, it, it is a very offensive game, and Tekken is very about it. Yeah, and with Street Fighter, there's that perfect balance of offense and defense mm -hmm. because you you can't really turtle and get away with it. But you can play extremely defensively and play more reactionary, yeah. Um, rather than you know actionary, where you're where you're making the first move, you can wait and you can wait for your opponent to fuck up by like one frame. Like, right. well, they just they barely missed me. Now I can hit my ex, or now yeah. I can hit you know what you know whatever it is. So there's a lot of strategy to it. Um, yeah. and like seeing the little things, and it was highlighting I think real like punch Chun Li, and it mm -hmm. dazed her, and she spun around. Yeah. Like, for about half a second. But, like, for the pro guys, that half a second changes everything. You know, yeah, because now they can prep more stuff. They, they can, can open up a combo. More stuff. Yeah. Uh, they can... <laughs> <Move this on. laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so, like, as you as you were saying, um, like, with the, with the offense and, like, timing and stuff, uh, they're doing, like, little nuances on the characters now. Like, with Ryu's EX mode with the lightning, he... Or, or like with Ryu in general, he's hitting s slower, but as you look at the hits, they look like they're harder, they're heavier. Yeah. You know? Like it looks like uh, the screen pauses for a second and does like yeah. a slight shake. Yeah. Like it, there, a lot of them are like very thunderous blows in the yeah. way. Yeah. And, like it, and it really helps the stuff in the background like waves up and down. Um, yeah. Whenever it, you know, like they're really selling the idea that these kicks could probably kill a normal human being. Right. So like um, with, when, when Ryu does... Uh, uh, EX activation lightning mode. Whenever he does his Hadouken uh, with the lightning, it actually guard breaks uh, Chung Li. But I think as of right now, Ryu is the only one that is able to do that, that can guard break with oh. a Hadouken. So, like, again, very, very much nuances yeah. on each of these characters. Oh, <laughs> get super kicked there. But uh, with, the, with the bowl of uh, with the noodles. But yeah, like, again, nu nuances, which, which is awesome uh, to have in, in the next Street Fighter. Because uh, depending how many characters they're going to have, uh, you want everybody to be very different. And if Ken is going to be in this game, he needs to be very different from Ryu. Right. Like in terms of being the faster guy, you know, maybe activation fire. And I don't know how that would work with the with Street Fighter Five. But like again, need to be different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. And I think uh, yeah, there's about 20 more seconds on this, but I'm I'm excited for it. Um, I've fighting game genre is definitely something I want to get more into. But it's kind of hit and miss with me. Like, yeah. I could either really get into a game or just play it twice. And then, like, I got a free copy of Injustice, mm -hmm. Gods Among Men or Gods Among Us or whatever it's called on PS4 mm -hmm. for the PlayStation Network. It was free. But I kind of don't know. All right. Now, oh, what we're going to do here. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. So, uh, but, yeah, fighting games are just one of those deals. Um, but.